I'm going to talk a little bit about upping your game in the world of filtering in Max. So let's start out here with our filtering and I'm just going to assume that you already know about the biquad object. The biquad object is sort of the Swiss Army knife uh, filter in Max. It takes an input, gives you an output, and then it lets you define the coefficients that are used for the filter. So coming up with these coefficients is a little bit of a black art for a lot of people. And to make that simple, there's this UI widget called filter graph. And I'm sure that anybody that's used the biquad object has spent a little bit of time using the filter graph object. We can define different shapes of filters in here. For example, here's the low pass. We could also change it into being a high pass. Etc. And then this generates the coefficients that we send to biquad. So if we just turn this on and hit play, and there you have it. In addition to filter graph, there's also the filter coef object. This object is a handy one if you don't want to use the user interface part of the filter graph object. And this offers all of the same modes as filter graph for generating your coefficients. And it does so at signal rate. So this is handy if you want to do some sort of ramping of either the frequency or the resonance and not have stair step sounds in your filters. So that's handy, that's great. But what if you want to do something more complicated or more advanced. So the first part of upping our game here in the world of filtering is seeing what's actually happening with our filtering. The filter graph is a handy little widget in terms of playing with the sound and getting a general idea of what's happening. Um, however, it's not particularly scientific or detailed in its description. So to get that, we can use an object in Max called the plot. So I'll make a plot object, and we can take a quick look at the help patcher to get an idea of what's happening in the plot object. The plot object can basically make any sort of graph like you would see in Keynote or Numbers. There are all sorts of ways to configure this object. Uh, here we're showing the contents of a buffer. Here's in the contents of a larger buffer as sort of a waveform. We can use it as a super customizable scope and we can do spectral plots of FFTs. There's a whole world of power in this object. What we want to do right now is we want to do a graph where we have the frequency in Hertz going across the x-axis and the y-axis shows us the gain at each of those frequencies. The easiest way to set up a plot object for this is to go ahead and use the prototypes and find, we'll do spectral comparison uh, with dB versus Hertz. And we can drag this object into our frame here. Now all we have to do is provide the data to the plot object so that it can actually draw the filter response. Lucky for us, we have an object that will do just that called filter detail. Just as it might sound, this will provide the details of the filter given the coefficients. So biquad's taking five coefficients because it is a second order filter. And if we send these coefficients into filter detail, it will provide the data that we can plot. So let's go ahead and do this. Now we could adjust the range on our plot to see exactly what's happening here, but we can see already we have some attenuation where the signal here is below zero dB until we get to the cutoff frequency. At the cutoff frequency, we have a resonant peak that is above unity gain, and then it trails off slowly. Unlike the limited view we get in the filter graph, we can see that it doesn't really just go like to zero. We have all the way out here at the Nyquist frequency, we're still at roughly negative 50 dB. So there's going to be some significant amount of frequency getting through. 
So the filter detail object has helped us get this data that we can put into the plot object. And I'll encourage you also to take a look at the filter detail help patcher. The filter detail uh, help patcher shows you a number of different filters, including the ability to see how Max's comb filter works. You can get greater visibility into what's happening in the all pass filters. It's really a great little resource to explore on your own. Back to where we began here, we have BiQuad. And while BiQuad's great, it is still just a second order filter. And the filter graph, um, while it's great, it offers a limited number of filter responses. But we have a third option, and that third option is the filter design object. Let's take a look at the filter design help patcher. Where filter graph will generate coefficients for a resonant low pass filter or a low shelf filter, we may want some other type of low pass filter. And filter design gives us some of the more advanced and difficult to calculate low pass filter coefficient series. For example, here's a Butterworth low pass filter. The Butterworth filter gives you a perfectly flat frequency response in the pass band. Then it trails off smoothly to negative infinity across the transition band. This allows us to attenuate the frequencies that are out of our pass band much more powerfully than what we could do using the algorithms in the filter graph object. Remember that BiQuad is just a second order filter. We could generate the coefficients for a second order filter here. And then we could use these coefficients from this filter with BiQuad. But one of the really powerful things about the filter design object is you can generate coefficients for higher order filters. And a higher order filter, for example, here's a 20th order Butterworth filter again in a low pass configuration. And to implement a 20th order filter, we can't use a single biquad. We could use 10 biquads. And in fact, that's exactly what the cascade object does. The cascade is just a series of biquad filters inside of it. So now if I turn this on, you can hear that the filter is being applied to this noise source. Filter design offers other topologies as well. These topologies allow you to control the trade-offs in designing a filter yourself. For example, a Chebyshev one low pass filter, in the same order as the Butterworth filter can achieve a much steeper roll off, as you can see here with how steep this line is. The steepness of this line, however, does have an expense, and that expense is that there is some distortion in the pass band. That distortion may be perfectly acceptable. There are little ripples in it, and you can control how big those ripples are. So if I were to say 3 dB of ripple is acceptable, I can get an even steeper transition. On the other hand, a Chebyshev 2 filter keeps the pass band completely flat, but it has ripples in the stop band. So in this case, we have a nice steep transition band followed by a bunch of lumps here that are occurring below the noise floor. We've determined when we design this filter that we want a stop band attenuation of negative 96 dB. So chances are, in many cases, you won't be able to hear any of this, and it's perfectly acceptable. How do you know what order filter you want to use? That's a really good question. The higher the order of the filter, the more expensive your audio processing will be from the cascade object, because there will be more biquad filters inside of it. Also, the more expensive it will be to calculate the filter coefficients. 
So to figure that out, there's an order tab in this help patcher, which can help you do exactly that for the Chevy Chev 2 case. So if you knew that you wanted to have an a uh, stop band attenuation of 96 dB and you knew that you wanted your cutoff frequency to be at let's say 1000 Hertz and you knew that you wanted a really steep filter let's say that the transition from your pass band to your stop band could only be 200 Hertz wide then this patcher will calculate for you that you need a 19th order filter in order to realize your dreams. And with that 19th order filter, here's the frequency response. And you can also look at things like the phase response and the group delay, which is something that hopefully we can cover in some future videos. If we go back to the original tab, I can show you one of my favorite things to do with the filter design object, and that is I can design some really nice, precise bandpass filters. So with the Chevy Chev 2, we can use a stop band attenuation of 96 dB, which is usually good enough, given everything else that I have going on. And then I can tell it that I want a bandpass response. With the bandpass response, I can tell it what frequencies I'm looking for. I can be looking for let's say between 2000 and 4000 Hertz. Then depending on how steep I need that transition to be, I can define the order. Currently, we're defining a 20th order filter. And if you look at this response, you'll see that the gain is attenuated by at least 96 dB until we get to this 2K mark. And then we have nearly a brick wall coming all the way up to unity straight across unity with no distortion and then straight back down in another near brick wall to implement the filter. And this way I can have a band that's really flat across the top and I have a lot of control over what's getting through. So hopefully this inspires you to explore the filter design object a little bit more in Max, the filter detail object and the plot object, all of which can be used together to really get control of your filtering and take them to the next level.